Beers and Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. This, oh Steve, has been brought to us by Frank Williams. The scene is I'm pledging Gamma Phi Gamma, school days reference, and I am greeting my frat brothers. Greetings, big brother A Boogie, the most funniest member of Gamma Phi Gamma, a.k.a. the Ace of Spades. Greetings, big brother GTA Andy, a.k.a. the one the, with the cocaine running through his veins, a.k.a. the Mexican Jew. Greetings, a.k.a. the producer, a.k.a. the man behind the scenes, a.k.a. big brother O Steve. That's how them college niggas do yeah, that, right? I like that one, though. Yeah, I like All right. that one. All right. All right. Jesus. Like a fucking storm. All right. Um, You're electric. I'm electric. Damn, my brain. You're electric. It's alive. It's alive. Right. Weird science. Right. Yeah, Weird yeah. science. Yeah. yeah. I was try- it sounded like a... Christopher Walken and Frankenstein. It's live. It's live. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Apollo liftoff. Uh, hidden gem. Long time no right, brother Aries. I got a New York artist for your name, Boldy James. If you don't like this dude, it's definitely time to hang it up. He's breaking through and taking no prisoners. He's got a new album to check out, but his work with the Alchemist is crazy. Do dead nice. Thank you, Apollo Jordan. Damn, nigga, you couldn't send me something to listen to? I'm supposed to search for this motherfucker? I'm too old to search, nigga. (laughs) Got to bring shit to me. Um, Next time, give me a link, man. Give me a link, man. Mm -hmm. Um, Incidentally, it was a clip, and I had wondered, I don't know if you saw this clip, LL Cool J was a little bit upset and testy with a certain DJ. And in the clip, he doesn't say the guy's name. He says he doesn't want to say the guy's name. Um, because this guy basically said that if you don't have no money as an old school rapper, then you ain't shit. And LL took offense to that because he said, you know, again, back in those days, artists didn't get money like they can get today. But don't think that just because somebody ain't rich, they didn't make a contribution to the culture. So LL took a lot of offense to that. I later found out that the DJ he was talking about was DJ Alchemist or Alchemics. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I saw the clip. Yeah. You know, let me tell you something, man. Somebody ain't got no money. Don't mean they ain't make, you know, contribution to the game. You know what I mean? It's a lot of pioneers, man. Watch your mouth, man. Watch your step, B. He was upset, and rightly so. God damn it. Uh, without the pioneers, none of these niggas that are here today would be here. So, you know, big shout out to DJ Cool Hurt and Run DMC and LL Cool J and MC Light and Big Daddy Kane. You know what I mean? Rock him to God, KRS One, all them niggas in the uh, era. <laughs> I'm saying, fat boys, Curtis Blow. Don't you dare do that. Did you get Kumo D in there? Kumo D at the Wild Wild West. Yes. I used to... <laughs> uh, all right. Um, bear with me. All right. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Gangsta. I did that one. Okay. All right. Um, Angel X Santana. Uh, it was funny. He sent this first email to me and this is the unfiltered version. This is the R rated version. Okay. And then he sent this again to me, but he cleaned it up. Uh, cause maybe he felt a certain kind of way at coming at you. 
okay. the way he came at you. Uh, what up, a a It's me, Lewis, a.k.a. Animal, a.k.a. Angel. I know my spelling sucks. I didn't proofread before, and Andy hating Mexicans don't like Boricuas. We speak the truth and get the girl without trying. Swag, baby, LOL. Anyway, uh, I hear the lawsuit is done. I'm glad. Congrats. Much love. Much love. P.S. Puerto Ricans don't need green cards. We are Americans. And plus, I live in America since day one. Have a good day. And Andy, keep mooching off of talent. And you're not talent, you jealous motherfucker. Oy vey, you talk. Peace. But then he ends it with a laugh emoji. I don't know. Like That was a complicated issue right there. Yeah? Yeah, there was a lot of complication in everything that he said to me. So, uh, or, or just said in the... Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think he's working some stuff out. I'm going to leave it at that. I think he's working stuff out. It's the holidays, man. Yeah. Let's be nice. Yeah, but I think he is working some stuff out in his head. Hey, yo, papi, I don't know. It's a fucking Puerto Rican. And you talk to me. And we know the Mexican. And you play because, uh, how to say, you green card. And uh, I don't know, papi. I don't know. <laughs> that sounded like. Um, Jonathan Salgado. Salgado. Andy Aries, my wife and I went to see you guys. Oh, you're going to like this one. Uh, you're going to like this one. Andy, and, and this is a nice contrast to what we just I, I still don't really understand what we just Hey, said. Papi, you play for the baseball with the Yankees, man. You go now, Papi. I don't know. The red beans and ice, and you play the baseball with the Yankees, and the people come in and see the morning. I don't know, Papi. All right. That's what that sounded like. <laughs> and you probably asked him a question that didn't match that answer. Hey, excuse me, brother. Uh, Santiago, you know the time? Papi, I don't know the baseball with the Yankees, man. You know, you play the baseball with the red beans and rice and they put a big old burrito on my and they the fucking bodega, man. <laughs> That's what he told you. All right. Um, Aries, Andy Aries, my wife and I went to see you guys at the Rally Improv, the Puerto Rican and Dominican couple. We loved it. Andy, I got to say, even though you feel the room, it doesn't stop you from doing your thing. I saw you switch gears and break the tension barrier by bringing something personal into the mix and putting your spin on what, on what, so a lot of us go through. Yeah, you didn't need so, puppy. You didn't need so, puppy. On what a lot of us go through. You don't have to put the so, puppy. All right. We had a quick chat about our kids. You mentioned it. You remember this couple? Uh, yeah. And I mentioned my six-year-old daughter being autistic. Something that went on the surface. Something that on the surface, others can't see the struggle. When you started that joke, my wife tensed up a bit thinking it was going to sting, but it made us laugh so hard, probably harder than anyone in the room because we could relate. There was no denying the joke came from a good place. You found humor where others wouldn't see it because it came from the love you have for your kid and acceptance of what you cannot change. It also brought awareness. Um, And now he's on to me. Aries, you tackled an issue my wife takes personal and you said some stuff that nearly moved her to tears. You spoke on what it means to be a biological woman. When you broke that down with zero hesitation and gave a voice to what so many people hesitate to speak on in a time when real women's rights are under attack, when mothers are being called birthing person instead of mothers, you took a sec and put a spotlight on the consensus to remove, remove confusion. If there was any, We've been tracking the whole trans brainwashing movement. Uh, Having three kids of our own, it's very real to say that parents are losing rights and kids are being groomed. Adults can do what they want. Just leave the kids out. People out out there pushing for an M to be added to the LGBTQ crew. M short for MAP, minor attractive person. Not with my kids. There's going to be a lot of slow singing. The fly will bring in, you know, that's the biggie verse. Gonna be a lot of so far with Lincoln and the Brigham. All right, if you get the vibe. Question Have you and Andy looked into the whole January 6th news that's been coming out with the whole FBI supposedly using a guy to get the public to get into the Capitol? January 6th committee won't go after this guy. His name is Ray Epps. Uh, FBI always been sketchy. Anyway, sorry for the long email. I'm gonna check you later. Baby, baby. Um, 
You see, doctor, if you're still listening, that's a nice sandwich. <laughs> Started off with a nice piece of bread, ended with a nice piece of bread, and in the middle was actual edible meat and cheese. What you gave us was doo-doo on bread. It's the holidays, doctor. Be nice. Thoughts? Um, no, I appreciate the the, the nice uh, email. Right. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, what I talked about about my son resonated with them. Uh, it usually it usually does uh, mm. with people that have a connection to, to autism. Um, and again, like we've been saying, or I keep saying, if you can laugh at it, you can get through it. That's that's the whole point. But um, the January 6th thing, um, there's some obvious things, and then there's all these other things, and there's um, there's obviously things that happen that you cannot deny by watching with your eye and seeing what happened. But this behind the scenes stuff and both sides have two different stories and they're both going at each other. Yeah. I'm, I'm out right now. I'm going to, I'm going to read, I get as much information as I can, but I I don't trust either of these. I I think, I think there's so much distrust rightfully. So I'm just at a place where we are stalled. We're stalled as a country. Um, I don't know that I'm as familiar with. He's talking about the storming of the Capitol. Yeah, but all the things that happen are happening behind the scenes, and you know whether or not how it was caused, what what caused it, and, and I mean you can go back and forth on what what caused it, what was the match uh, that lit the whole fire, but uh, there's other things in there. I mean, there, there's other things we don't we're not talking about that need mm-hmm. to be considered, and and I, I'm not going to get into it because this is a uh, this is one of those things where it's it's everybody's just yelling their own opinion to the people that ha- that have their the same opinion, and it's just again it's why we're stalled because if you agree with this and you yell that out into uh, the the internet and to the ethos and you get back we agree with you so you feel you're right and the other side's doing the same thing they're yelling it out and they're getting back what they want and there's no movement mm. it's just people yelling at each other and for no reason. Uh, not coming to any conclusions. They're just the conclusion is that the people that I know and that I care about agree with me, and the other side is saying the same thing. So, yeah, I, I uh, <clears throat> ever since that debacle uh, ended, I, I haven't really been keeping up with it, so I can't speak intelligently on the subject. Um, however, you know, and I'm I'm not going to get into a thing about this because we've done it a million times, but I appreciate. Uh, what you said about your wife and that joke. Um, because as always, everybody deserves happiness. Everybody deserves equality. Everybody deserves uh, to be treated with respect and like decent human beings because that's what we all are. Um, but I feel like there is a voice that needs to be heard because, you know, for the reason you said, uh, we got to protect our women at all costs. And, and, and there's certain things that, are being framed and said in such a way where, you know, uh, I think we're losing perspective on some of that. Um, so everybody should be heard as long as when you're heard, whatever you're it, whatever it is you want people to hear isn't causing anybody any dismay. You know, everybody has the right to be heard. Everybody does have the right to be heard. And like, but what's happening right now is it's like a game has already started. We're already playing a game, and uh, sometimes you come in and you go, hey, listen, the rules of this game are affecting us, and it's not working out for the game. The game's not going to be able to be played correctly. Uh, we need to change We need to change the rules a little bit. There, Some people aren't trying to change the rules a little bit so that everything works in the game for everyone. They're trying to redefine the game. They're trying to take out all the rules that were there and throw all that out and restructure the game. And that's a different story. Right. Everybody should be heard. Everybody should be feel safe. Everybody should feel like they're, the, the, that there's a place. But uh, we don't get to recreate everything to, to suit our needs as, as, the, as a group. It's, 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 it's a bigger group. It's a human group. And uh, I don't know what we're doing. So uh, I'm going to stay... Uh, that was directed to you, so I'm going to leave that conversation with you. And yeah, and and, and if you're playing the, and if whatever this game is that we're playing, uh, 
if you don't like some of it, uh, you don't have to slap some of the pieces off the board just because you're into the vortex. This it, it, it's it's going to get more complicated. Did you get that? Yeah, what I just said into the vortex. Yeah, slapping the pieces it's, off yeah, the board. Yeah, you know what that's from? Uh, we just saw it. Dahmer. Yeah, yeah. That's that's his <laughs> game that he played. Uh, yeah. But what's he, what do you call that game? I don't know, but I he mentioned what it, the vortex. Because yeah, yeah. if you get too close to it, you get and too close he was to using piece. like bone pieces, right? Well, there were probably other humans. Pieces from Shh, Jesus. Oh goodness. Um, Nick Puente. This is the Puente. I love that name. Tito Puente. I just hear all kind of salsa music in my head. Podcast submission. Yes. It's just a great name, Tito Puente. Tito Puente. Tito Puente, puppy. It's a great right. name. Uh, what up, Aries? Uh, I've been a big fan of yours since... <clears throat> fan of yours since Def Comedy Jam, Mad TV. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and when you co-star with John Leguizamo, the pest, I really like your position on being yourself because I'm unapologetically me. And if people don't like it, fuck them. I've done open mic comedy and I tell my life stories. My technique is simply amplifying what happened in my life. I'm naturally good at this. I'm naturally funny. I have a joke about one of my petty pet peeves. And a lot of my material is about my many disabilities. I've never been afraid of a microphone. I've never been afraid of people like Patrick Swayze said in Roadhouse. Uh, opinions vary. I just have the perfect face for radio. Narcissist. No, I'm joking. Uh, I never invite my people to my shows because I want genuine laughter from people who don't give two fucks about my life. That tells me I'm doing something correct. I have my own podcast as well, and I can hear when I'm reaching for material for both my show and open mics. My dream isn't necessarily being a comedian. It's entertaining the world. How I do that doesn't matter. Well, Nick, you don't need us to tell you a goddamn thing. You free, nigga. You believe in yourself. You naturally funny. You got a gift for this. Um, and I love that he said he doesn't bring like people he knows so that yeah. he gets the real, the real response to the room. You naturally funny. You unapologetic. But you don't need nothing from me. Shit. What you, what you looking for advice, nigga? Got it, baby. Shit. Fuck that. You don't need Mr. Miyagi. You already Daniel's son. Son. <laughs> uh... Anything you want to add to him? No, I think it's great. Huh? I think it's great. I love that confidence. Um, you know, sometimes when people are that confident. Yeah, I know. know what I didn't need to say that, though, because it, it, oh. it either is or it isn't. But right. I assume that it is. I bet, he, I bet he's... I bet it's, it it's in your nature to assume the best of people. No, no, no. I, I just from, from how he... From what he said in, in little pieces, like not right. bringing other people... I, I think there's an uh, there's there's awareness, and that's the. It's great to have confidence, but you also have to have self awareness. Right. And he has, it sounds like there's some there's self awareness there. A lot. Yeah. So there's there's I I I trust that he probably is funny. Okay. Um, and he's such a good man. Uh, he's a good boy. Um. Our boy, Dewan Curse, the bright side of comedy. Yo, what's going on, fellas? Thought I would try to change the collective mood in this bitch. I know the past month has been rough, so let's switch speeds and have some fun. I watch a lot of movies, and with all that talk about big names, you never hear about the other contributing talent. What are some of the best underrecognized actors slash comics overlooked in movies but without their contribution, the scene might not have been as great. Off the top of my head, I can think of three that really stick out. Vince Vaughn and Be Cool. This nigga was straight retarded. From Banging on the Rock uh, to ba oh, Bagging on the Rock to be, uh, Begging for His Life as they hung him off the roof, he was perfectly casted for that role. Kevin Hart and Romney Malco in the 40-year-old version. Uh, if anyone listening hasn't seen it, then it should be on your top must see watch list. The scene speaks for itself. Um, Rick James Chappelle show. It wasn't enough that they were doing Charlie Murphy, true Hollywood stories, but to bring the actual Rick James into the skit and deliver the infamous cocaine, uh, cocaine's a hell of a drug. Brilliant. I can go on and on, but just wanted to jumpstart the dialogue as always love the podcast. We support both you guys. 
We love you and keep your pimp hands strong. Players, much love, Dewan. D, this is a little misleading because you 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 say you bring up the point. Who are some of the best underrecognized actors in comics? But you're bringing up scenes and moments that are not overlooked. They're completely uh, where they should be, and in the and in the the vortex of our comedic minds and hearts. <laughs> um, the Vince Vaughn thing, I'll give you, but that Kevin Hart, Romney Malcolm scene, that's like famous. But here's the thing I didn't know. Every time I've seen that scene, I saw it on YouTube, which I saw the whole scene. When they show that movie on TV, they don't show that whole scene. They cut out of it early. What an injustice. Why would you not show that whole scene? It's potently powerful. I was so disappointed. I, was, I think it was in Raleigh. I was in my hotel and 40-year-old version was on. And as soon as that scene came on, I stopped what I was doing and I'm glued to the TV like a kid looking at a Christmas tree waiting to open a gift. And the scene ended halfway through. I was like, why would Judd Apatow not show that whole scene? So, yeah, that to me, I, it, it was, was bothersome. Um, and, you know, Rick James Chappelle, that is what blew, that's part of one of the many, but really one of the main things that blew that show up. So again, when you say it would have been interesting because now I'm trying to rack my brain thinking, and I know there's a million of them, but what are some of the comedic moments underrated that flew under the radar that were brilliant? It's a great question. And I know there's answers, but my brain is so scrambled right now. Um, Sam Morell and Joker. Sam Morell and Joker. Sam Morell's in the Joker movie where he's uh, he's the comic that opens for Joker, that is on the stage when the Joker is coming into the comedy club to, right. do, his, to do his set. But do you think that's a scene that... No, it doesn't. It doesn't define him, but it's just a good scene that gets right. overlooked. Because, uh, you know, it, it, you, what was kind of cool about it, and I guess this is because Gary Goldman's in it too, Right. That, that they used real New York right. comics and they put them into that scene right. um, every time they went to the comedy club. And that gets overlooked, but I mean, right. that's an obvious one be, to me because it's comics and they're, the scene isn't around them. Right. So, uh, but they're cool. I like, I think they're funny comics and they, uh, what was cool about it is that they uh, just had them do material and then they used what they wanted. Right. So I, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, just off the top of my head, and I've said this one before, uh, Jamie Foxx and, and Ali, you know, Cham, no, I got a problem. You know, I got a problem with that cocaine and the white women. And I can leave that cocaine alone. But them white women, God damn it. How you deal with it, boy? <laughs> that shit. Oh, one of my favorites. Oh, and fucking, here's a perfect one. Uh, what's my man's name? The one that died of, of drugs. He's in Along Came Polly. Most Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Along Came Polly. Now, again, for this dude not to be a comic, he stole some scenes. Uh, of course, my favorite. Dude, I, dude, I just shot it. What? I, I just shot it. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what that is. And Ben Stiller, the, the one two on this is great. I, I, I don't know what that is. I fought it and I shit at the same time. Pause the beat that Ben Stiller takes and goes, You're the most disgusting human being I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> that delivery and pause is hilarious. Yeah, he did do really well in that. And then, of course, I like when they both go to get the slices of pizza, how casually and nonchalant, uh, as, as, cause, cause I don't know if you call that OCD, but Ben Stiller is blotting yeah. the grease off the pizza and, as, as, as he's doing that, you know, him and C Philip Seymour C. Hoffman are just engaging in whatever conversation they're engaging in. And like, it's just normal. He goes, dude, what are you doing? I I'm, I'm blotting the grease off my pizza. Oh, stop. That's the best part. Give me that. And he takes his slice and makes the drippings of the oil from Ben's slice on his own slice. That, that, that yeah, Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, in that is fucking gold. Um those are the two off the top of my head. And again, they're not in the movie, but the outtakes for life with Eddie and, and Martin. I know one. It's not overlooked, though, but I do have one. Um, and it's old. I'm going back. Fast okay. Times at Ridgemont High. Mm. Pizza guy. 
See, I got to see that. Pizza guy. He just, he, he knocks on the door and goes, pizza guy. And it was just this moment. And the way he says pizza guy. Right. And he says it twice. And then Mr. Hand comes over to open. There's a, uh, he, 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 he made that one line. Right. Something in the movie. Like the, the, the pizza guy is a known line. Like, right. Man, pizza guy. I gotta see that fucking movie. Yeah. That, 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 that is way back. And he, he was, he was a comic too. He did right. comic. Right. So. Okay. Damn, I wish I, I know there's a million. I hate the fact that I can't just roll them off my fucking tongue. Uh, but good question, though. Um, Alex Berdeau. Um, Alex Berdeau. Columbus slash music. Aries, I emailed you last year. I'm a huge fan of your stand up, your podcast, and your interviews on Vlad TV and comedy hype, especially. Other than Kendrick and Cole, are you into any current rap? Have you heard of Rod Wave? I think you'd actually find him interesting. When's the next time you come into Columbus, Ohio? Um, I have not heard of Rod Wave. Um, and dude, I I'm I'm, in, I'm I'm you know I'm from the Jurassic era. Era. I'm, I'm old. Think I'm a dinosaur. I'm from the Cretaceous period. Um, if it ain't '90s, if it ain't 2000s, I've pretty much stopped listening to hip hop. If it ain't the artist I grew up with and know, it is. Dude, I'm going to tell you, this is how I know it. I'm, I, I, again, I've said this, but this, there are things that happen that officially, officially, officially let you know your era, you're done. I play NBA 2K23, the basketball, NBA 2Ks. I've been playing them since fucking, uh, I was always an NBA Live guy and I've been fucking with NBA Live since uh, I remember the first time I ever played it, Shaq was on the cover, and this was when he was with Orlando Magic. So I, I was fucking with NBA Live since 96. NBA Live started getting corny, and I finally made the switch over to NBA 2K in 2011 because that was the first time Michael Jordan was featured. And I've been fucking with 2K since 2011. Up until right now, Last year's version 22 and this year's version 23, they always have the soundtrack where they put a gazillion rappers on the game. So as you're playing, just, they just shuffle through different rap. I remember the best version ever was when Jay-Z produced NBA 2K. I think it was 15 or 16. NBA 2K, 15 or 16. He, he starts off with his Doom, doom, doom. The moment you play the game, allow me to reintroduce public service. Now, that soundtrack was banging. And there's like at least 60 songs per game. Cut to, I'm playing to NBA 2K23. And what I do is, for the songs I don't like, you can delete them and you can only keep the songs you like. And on NBA, NBA 2K22, there was. Four songs I kept. The rest I threw out. <laughs> Dude, on this one, not one. I sat there. And, and when you go through all the songs, it almost takes you at least a half hour. I sat there for the whole half hour. And there was not one fucking song I liked. Now, one song that you even wanted to find out who sung it, anything? Not, you, you couldn't even get into the beat? Nothing. Nothing. And I, when I go nothing, I mean nothing. The rap, the cadence, the beat, the melody. I sat and listened to everyone and went, nope, nope. Is, is it me? Is, am I just, nah, I'm not feeling that. And it just let me know there's a new era has arrived and I'm not part of it. Have you asked anybody else if they enjoyed the music on it? I mean, I'm sure there are because there's different age range and demographics who play this game. But this music is for this generation. Okay. And I just went, I can't believe as a black man and as a rap fan, there's nothing I'm listening to that's making me go, oh, that's hot. I'm bobbing my head. I'm moving my body. I feel that. Every single song to me was garbage, nigga. Garbage. I said, they can't give us one Nas track or a Jay-Z track or a Biggie track. Something. My my son, who when I find out about new, you know, new music, 
Right. It's usually it's usually for Max. Right. Because uh, we have similar music taste. True likes more like harder rock. Right. Um, but Max just, I mean, Max was all excited because he just went and saw Wu Tang with Nas and uh, and Busta Rhymes in in Phoenix. Right. So he, and he's only twenty five. I don't think he's. I don't think it's for him. You know, and I've I've heard young guys go, "Hey, man, I'm in my twenties. I agree with you. Today's rap is garbage. I love that old school shit." I think the purists, if you're a purist, whether it's comedy, sports, music. You do your homework. You do your fucking homework. I don't understand how you call yourself a true fan and you're only a fan of your moment. If you're a fan, you you want to soak up the history. You want to know what comes before. You want to know what's you want to know where it started. Like that's why I say with comedy, I was so shocked when I the other day before I the night before I jumped on the plane to come here. I was like, I got my food. I'm like, man, what am I going to watch? I'm going watch, to watch something different. And as I'm perusing through the fucking on demand, I saw the documentary, uh, Dying Laughing. I said, did I see this? I said, no, I had to have seen this. I, I, there's not a comedy documentary I have not seen. Come to find out, I never saw this. But I love soaking that shit up. I like it. If it's comedy, I want to know. I, I want to know. I want to see the movies. I want to know the history because that to me, the homework, it pays off. The more knowledge you have of this thing called comedy, you know, Chris Rock said something really funny in that documentary. He goes, there's some comics who love to get laughs every 15 seconds. And that's cool. I mean, the job is to get laughs. I like laughs, I like oohs, I like awes, I like thought, I like, <gasps> he goes, what, and I've said this to myself many times on stage, and this is not me being egotistical, this is how it is. He goes, sometimes when I'm on stage and I'm 20 minutes in and they're fucking dying, in my head I'm going, oh, you motherfuckers ain't heard nothing yet. And when I'm on stage and I know it's that crowd and I'm like, nigga, I'm 10 minutes in, and these niggas is on me like this? Oh, wait till I hit them with the fucking... And you know you ain't even brought the thunder yet. That shit, that, I I just... To hear another comic say that, and again, you think you're alone in this sometimes, but to know that two people think like that, it, it tells you something about you. And, and again, as a boxing fan, Tyson was my era. Ali was not my era. But... I know everything about Muhammad Ali because I'm, I, I, I've, I, I know a lot about Jack Johnson. I know Jack Dempsey. I love boxing and to know the history of the game. I just don't understand how people say I'm a fan of music and rap and they don't know the old, the old school. I think it has to do with the, our phones and that we have so much information that a lot of times the younger generation isn't studying history. They watch documentaries. They get all this. Do stuff. they? Yeah. So when they get it, they get it from streaming or from their phone. If you have to go back and read on it, I don't think they're getting that because they're not. What are what are books? That's crazy. You would say that. Bill Maher feels that same way. It's crazy. People don't read books. Yeah, they're getting it straight from their phone. They don't. They don't have that. There used to be where, you know, when we wanted to know, like when you brought up Ali, my dad's favorite fighter, right? So, but I was still there, you know, I was still watching him fight, but not the first, not the, not the incarnation, not, right. not the, I was watching the older. So I wanted to know more. So you'd have to go, you know, we didn't get to go see the video. We had to read. Or be at the fight. Y- yeah. You, you know, it was, or you came on the radio, you could maybe get the fight on the yeah. radio. It, it just, we had to put work into it to get to know it and, we history was important because that's what, what things were built on. But things right now aren't built on anything. Uh, they're built on like, documentary. I, I, and I love a lot of these documentaries, but people have to realize too, when you get it from a documentary, you're getting the the version of the producer of, of the director that wanted to make that documentary. You're not necessarily getting uh, uh, just information. Um, 
I, I just think that that's why they don't know because they're they're going to know what's in front of them, what they have on, on them, I, and they're not going to go do their research. With music, it's a little different because they can go back and listen to it, but they have so much content. You know, I, I kind of have to apologize to Andy a little bit because on that episode where we were in Dallas and we were talking about open mics, when I saw this documentary and they were talking about uh, being a road comic and some of the comics were like, yeah, and then you do your show and then you jump on a train or you drive yourself to the next gig. And now this is where I'm like the kids with the phone. Drive. Train. <laughs> you don't fly. And, and he goes, yeah, and you stand in these crappy motels, hotels. I don't know where. I'm, I'll be staying in some nice shit. And, and then you, you're working at Bob's Pub where there's a comedy show. I'm like, damn, I'm the improv and the, and, the, and the funny bones and the helium. And I and I, I and I'm going, these are headliners. And and it, I'd never headline where I grinded it out. I, I this is a grind. Yeah. But it's a different kind of grind, though. It's a different kind of grind. This is a nice grind. And you know, Andy has said to me on more than one occasion, dude, you, you're an A-lister. You you sell tickets. You've been on TV, you've been in movies. So yeah, a lot of these guys will work at, you know, John's Chuckle Hut for twelve hundred dollars, and I'm like, God damn! So you know, damn, dude. And you know, sometimes it's funny, and I'm not, you know, I, I I'm I'm enjoying the fruits of your labor. You put in a lot of work to get to these uh, to tour like this, but there's times when, uh, like, we were in, in in this is the difference. We were in Texas, right? And we were going to do um, Austin and then we were going, this is just recently, we we're going to do Austin and then we we're going to go to uh, Dallas. Right. You know, most comics that aren't in your position, what they'd do is they'd do the Austin and then they'd uh, get like get some other gig or a show or an open mic or whatever and do another date and another few days in Austin. And then what I wanted to do and what we ended up doing and then going down to uh Dallas. Dallas and taking a car or whatever, however you get down there, a friend, a ride, a, you know, however you do it, you get down there. And that's what they do. And they, and they pair them up because sometimes we'll go to a place where we're completely opposite sides of the country. One, one, like we might go do some, a gig in, 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 uh, in, in Philly. Right. And then the next week we're in California, we're somewhere in Cal or California area. And then the following week we'll be back in DC. Like if you're a if you're an up and coming comic or like a road dog comic and you got to make a living, you can't do those kind of dates. You got to put it so that you can drive or train. You get to DC right, and right, and you're right. going to Philadelphia. Those are the those they are have the to next be routes, right? Yeah, right. So those are things that aren't even considered. But yeah, this is a this dude. This is I I realize that I'm I'm in the lap of luxury. Even if I'm staying in nice hotels, uh, taking the planes. Yeah. I take a train when I can because right. I like the train, but right. to you, that's foreign. This is a, you, 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 you have a good deal. And listen, this is like when Andy and I brought it up, but we were going to take a bus from Austin to Dallas. And that was what? Three hours, two hours yeah. or four, three hours, right? Yeah. It's like three, three hours, like three, three hours. hours. And you know, listen, I'm telling you, I, I had my yay field trip. Attitude, like it's gonna be fun. It's an adventure. Yeah, and I actually said to her, "You're gonna get to feel what it's like to be, you know, a, a not the A list comic." Well, and that, and again, but that wasn't even my my thought pattern because I'm like, look, if I had to take the bus by myself, that'd be different. But I'm be sitting next to Andy. Yeah, we got our videos. Yeah. We got a lot of thing work to do for the podcast. But then we was at the bus stop waiting, waiting for the bus. <laughs> no, 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 no. The bus was late. I don't give a fuck. I'm waiting. Yeah. I don't, I don't, no, no, nay, nay. <laughs> Call the fucking Uber, nigga. Let's go, let's do that. But, and, but back to the music thing, I'm just, and I love, and this is where part of me may be, I'm just nostalgic. Uh, and I, you know, uh, but I love seeing the growth. Like, like once upon a time ago, this used to be like this. I was around when it was like this. Yes. And now it's like that. And to see that, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. That's why a lot of what I follow on Instagram is 80s shit. Because when I see those clips of 80s nostalgia, I just go, Jesus Christ, I remember. I could literally have some people say, 
when they see a picture of something and let's say it's whatever it is, they go, yo, I could smell this picture. Yeah. They know the moment they can smell it. Like I, to know that I know that and to see the growth, I just think all of that is important. But see, but you're missing that these kids, they have no connection to that because they're But they don't want to have it. But and, and they won't have a connection to it because they didn't grow up in it. But they're gonna have connections to where they are that you're that you're well, later. Later. And that they're gonna be the old ones and they haven't thought about that yet, but that happens. Right. But with music too, and what we're talking about, and this is where people like the younger crowds get mad at you for saying this, and, and they've said it to me too. But everything evolves. And sometimes as you're evolving, uh, like, I don't know, like my kids, there was stages in their involvement from going from little babies to grown men, right? Mm. There are some ugly stages in there where like, you know, they're coming together, but they're awkward and mm -hmm. their eyebrows haven't, that hair in the middle hadn't mm -hmm. gone away and they, they just, their face was in shape, right? And right. They, they were gangly. They, there was awkward moments as they grew. Right. I think music and, and you got, we got to really look at rap is when, what it is. It's so young that it's growing. Yeah. And I think that it's in an awkward stage right now. It's in a puberty stage. And it's needs, it needs to get through this. Or well, hurry to fuck up. And it, you know, and it happens in all, all, all music changes. Are you supposed to be in your fifties and like rap? You know, there, I just watched something and I don't remember what it was, what it was on, but it was talking about how people who are more of a, who are connected to hip hop, that hip hop generation, mm. that we have stayed younger, that what we like, the way we dress, you know, the, the, that whole area. It's kept us younger for longer. So yes, you are supposed to like it if you're connected to it. Russell Simmons has to be thought of as one of the founders of hip hop. Yeah. You think he still listens to rap? Yeah, I'm sure he does listen to some. Mm. He has to. I mean, that's his. You think? No, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to, but that's kind of who he, who he is. Rap seems like the only genre of music where at some point you, you have to put it down. You're too old for it. Like jazz, you could be any age with jazz, any age with R&B, any age with soul, blues, even rock and roll. But rap just seems so specific to a young culture. I think is, well, that, that that's part of it though, too. Uh, I think is, is, as people age out of their youthfulness, right. they'll bring some, they'll bring some lyrics that meet their age and their demographic, what they're doing. I don't know that it translates in rap though. Dude, let me tell you something. If you could sit, if you were sitting next to me, so you know what I mean when I'm listening to the soundtrack for NBA 2K23, here's the other thing. And I, and I, and I say this to death, every other fucking track sounds the same. Yeah. Melody, the melody, that I say melody. And I mean, from the flow to cadence to be, and I'm just going, and this is where people will go again. Man, you just some old hating ass, the old head nigga hanging on to your shit. No, yo, in my era, Snoop even said this the goal was never to sound like the next guy. Right. Everybody had to have individuality. Big Pun did not sound like Snoop. LL did not sound like Rakim. Big Daddy Kane did not sound like the Beastie Boys. Everybody had, I'm telling you, I'm looking, listening to this soundtrack going, it just sounded, again, again, again. They all sound the same. You know, in early days, there was a cadence that was similar to, to a lot of the guys. A lot of, a lot of the guys had a cadence. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah. that that was there, and then that got broken out of, and then now we're in this part where this is making money. I think it's produced. I, I I don't think it's necessarily even the rappers. I, I know think I've it's said the production. This, I know I've said this on the podcast before. To that point, rap was birthed in the eighties. It, it was trying to find itself. So yes, but by the nineties, golden era, individuality was at the forefront. But in the 80s, in the very beginning, yes, that was, that was, it was born. It was trying to crawl. It was trying to learn to walk. By the 90s, motherfuckers was sprinting. 
Now we're back to everything sounding the same. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the full circle. We're going back to diapers and crawl it and drool. I, I think it comes out of this. I think it's a lot of it is production. And what happens in a business, in entertainment, people do what worked yesterday because they'll keep working yesterday's playbook until it doesn't work anymore because that's what they know works. And then someone will come up and blow it up and then that's the direction we'll head in again. And hopefully there'll be some more freedom in that. Sam, Sammy Pravilma. Damn. Damn, bro, watching Godfrey's pod and this memes, oh, this meme Simpson chick went off on you and even lied on your name saying you don't let black comedians to open for you. Bro, her face when they pulled the Vlad tape up and proved her wrong, LMAO. Stay, ooh, stay strong, bro, because these fools is a coming. Thank you, Sosa Prevail. Yeah, I said, dude, I, I, I made the mistake of when I told Anthony uh, or Jarvis to post that clip. Again, I sometimes, that's what sucks about being creative. Sometimes you think the best thing's too late. I should have told him, hey, when they cut to her face, play the fucking Seinfeld music again. Boom, 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 boom. boom. That would have been the perfect mwah on that motherfucker. Did you watch the whole episode? No. I didn't either, but I want to because I want to find out what she said after she looked like she could, she stopped breathing. It, you know, I hear you. But it doesn't matter. But I hear you though. Yeah, because I, I after you I, said she stopped breathing, it looks that's like it, funny. Yeah, didn't it? <laughs> just, I just love how Godfrey went, damn, you got stewy eyes. <laughs> and when they cut the her deadpan face and it was dumb, but then 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 Oh, that would have been fucking priceless. Uh, I love Godfrey for that. Uh, I love that he he held her accountable to it. Yes. Though. And then they got the clip. Right. Um uh, Ali D. Uh, I was trying to watch that too because I know we're down to that yeah. last bar. Yeah, we're, um, we're almost there. Uh, security guard. Um, hi, Aries. It's not that a necessary, it's not that a necessarily hate my job. I, Ali. I, baby. Uh, as in $10, a lot of I money. Uh, it's not that necessarily I hate my job. A job is a job, it puts money in my pocket and pays the bills. It's just that I guess I'm not happy where I am in life. It's difficult when I look back and think I should have done this and could have done this. Uh, and social media only makes it worse when you compare where you are in life with others of the same age. But I guess all we can do is take the mistakes of the past and use it as a lesson learned and live a better future. You ask what my dream is. It's to work in law enforcement. I like helping people and want to be the one someone looks to when they need help. I'm happy to say that I'm doing the proper steps in order to uh, make that a reality by doing this job and using it to pay my college tuition so that I can have the piece of paper that says I completed something. I'm sorry for using this as a therapy session, but hopefully there's a listener out there that's in a similar situation and can know that it's going to be all right and you just have to dig your heels and keep pushing to get what you want. Uh, Yeah, hey, I'm applauding you. I'm glad you found it's never too late. Never too late, never too late, never too late. Uh, it's never too late. Um, so do what you want to do, baby. And I wish you the best of luck. And you said law enforcement. Who knows? Maybe you could team up with A, B. And then y'all will do a cross-country homicide case that starts where y'all at, but then bleeds into Las Vegas. And you have to work in conjunction with the smoking aces detectives. <laughs> Say it. Ali D and A, B. With smoking aces. Oh, that just said, that sounds good. And then somewhere there's a scene where y'all two, because y'all females, cops, and me and Andy is two male detectives. In order to solve the crime, we got to get naked and we all got to fuck. And that helps us solve the crime. (laughs) That was very nice. Badges and dicks and sticks. You said, but that, that was very nice. That was very nice that you put together. Um, there's a couple things in there that I didn't like, though. What? Well, one, it says because it's talking about doesn't like where they are. Yeah. And then it said social media. You compare it to why would you compare it to social media? No one's posting their bad day where unless they, unless they want sympathy. Right. Otherwise, you're posting everything that's good that day. 
or that's happened to you or trying to make it look half those people will lean up against their cars aren't even their cars so you're right that was the other thing and i've heard so many people say don't believe everything you see on social media yeah people are desperate to show that their lives aren't as miserable uh as they really are and now i gotta go back to that documentary die and laugh and jim jeffries said and this is something i've said a million times he goes i believe uh, you know I believe most people aren't really even happy about where they are in life. 99% of people are doing a job they don't even love. You know, so this comedy thing, you know, when you're doing what you love, uh, blah, 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 blah. But he basically said that. He echoed that. Most people are not doing what they love. No. Which is what's so funny to me about social media is that so many of these people will call me washed up. But you have a boss. Your boss tells you when to get out of bed to be to work on time. Your boss tells you when you can go eat. Your boss tells you when you can go home. I don't have a motherfucking boss. So, like, come on, man. Don't fucking, don't get caught up in the vortex that is social media. Well, and then the other part where it said seeing where other people are. And, man, you can't compare yourself to anybody else. You right. can't get, because you are the only one that is you. Right. And to compare yourself to other people, I'm sure that if you want to compare yourself that way, there's a lot of people that compare themselves to you and find them themselves behind and where they want to be right. compared to you. You can't look at it that way. You are you are the individual. You're the soul. And you have to look at your life where you want it to be and where you want it to go. But com- judge, using social media and using other people, that isn't it. It's all about you. And the important thing that I like to to tell people that have said things to me because like I'm an older guy who started to do comedy and I figured out how to be able to do this as my job. But what your job is, and we all have jobs, no matter if you're rich or not, your job is managing your money, whatever it is, it is your job. You're trading time because this is the only thing we have. This is our currency is time. How long we get to be here. And we don't know. We don't even know how much we have. So the funny part is our currency is time that we're on this earth. And we don't even know how much time we get. So we have to make the most of, uh, of that time. So when you're doing something you don't like and you don't know it, and you, you already know that, there's no amount of money or food that they, you put on your table that's worth trading that time in for. So I'm not saying that there's moments in, that I've done things and jobs that I didn't want to do. There is. But you have to work towards getting away from that and start doing what you want to do. All of us should do what we, we want to do. It's not always possible. But... No, it is possible. It's not always possible. I said not always possible. Sometimes you have to do some shit you don't want to do. Right. You but, you do, but, but you, you want to you going to focus on what you want to do, and right, you so you can eventually forward. get yeah yeah you got to move towards that. You gotta keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. That's I mean it it sounds so ridiculous that that Sylvester Stallone scene, but it's it's a key. It's it's, a key. Ab- it's absolutely, absolutely correct. Brilliant. Yes, but but I think people need to remember you, it's you're trading time and. When you do trade that time, and this is to, to, if you don't always get what you want to do, make sure you're getting the value for your time. Don't do it. Just right. do it. Make sure you get enough so that it, it's working for you. You know, I got to tell you, obviously the situation with Tiffany, you know, if I had it my way, I would love that none of it occurred. But the one thing I will say, and it feels like it's, it was some sort of an intervention, some weird intervention when DL, when DL Hewley told me, hey man, stop responding to these people. Because since that whole thing, and I'm it's it's getting less and less and less as the days go by. The, the vitriol I've been getting, you know. But every now and then, I you know look at the, my comments, and there's one here, one there. But the fact that I have not responded to people in a while now, I feel like I kicked a drug habit. Like I feel clean. <laughs> Good. But like I, I go, you know what? I don't even want to respond because I now realize how fucking stupid it is. You are responding to no one who you don't know. Someone you don't know who you will most likely never see. Like, nigga, why is it important that they know how you feel? Not only are you responding in your in, in cases of negative stuff like this to people that you don't know, but most of these people aren't even them. They're like, uh, it, it's, it's a fake account. It's a way that they, because they don't even have uh, the ability to come at you as themselves. They make things up. And I'll just let other people know, uh, for people who, you know, uh, follow me on Instagram, which I do appreciate, uh, Andy Comedy on Instagram, um, 
I hadn't responded while this all this stuff was going on because people were coming at me and I wasn't going to talk to them because I, pro- I, I my my thing was I wasn't going to say anything at all. And so I didn't. And it was hard to get on uh, Instagram. So I, I actually took my Instagram and hid it in my uh, phone so I wouldn't go to it all the time. So I know a lot of people I haven't responded to you that I normally had responded to you guys in the past. Um, I'm going to get back on there. I just had to hide it for a while because I didn't want to. I was tempted to say some stuff and I, and I just And listen, I'm still tempted every now and then to say shit because that's the nature of who I am. That's the wow in me. The the alpha male, the New Yorker, the 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 dog, nigga. I I I I'm, I I you know, I like to play with my food before I eat it. And I eat you niggas verbally. And I want to eat you niggas sometimes, but I go, for what? What difference does it make? What is it going to do? And, and I want to say this too uh, to everybody who did go on my IG at the time and spread to the people who went at the people that were coming at me. Not And, and I really appreciate you. Some, some of you got back to me. I just want to tell you, I really appreciate you doing that because that's what even Ice-T said to us. I love when you don't have to, you don't even have to go at the person. Right. You have people that will go at right. them for you because, and that solves a big problem. Cause and I got a lot of people who, who in defense of me are going at motherfuckers. So, you know, be like Longshanks. Archers. Put the archers <laughs> up front, nigga. And then when it's time to start the war, then you just stay on your horse in the back and let them go to fight. But, you know, I really did. It was, it was interesting. Um, it taught me a lot. This, 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 this little, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with me. Right. But I was, I, I was adjacent to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I told you I, would, I wasn't going to comment just because of what it is. And I just thought how funny this is when I watched how social media really works and what, what it is. And right. if you guys, I know that it can make a career, it can do it, but it also is just one of the most evil things I've ever seen us have the right. ability to have. I, I, I'm really having a hard time getting back on, but I will because I enjoy the interaction with the people that, that right. do want to interact in, in a, in a, in a respectful way. I don't right. even care if you come at me when I did something d- dumb and you want to tell me that I'll take it because I knew I did it. Right. But uh, some respectful way of doing that is, is great and, and not, there's just so much bullshit. I mean, I, I don't understand how we consume our lives with this stuff. And I was putting way too much time into it. You know, my mother said to me, uh, Ares, are you friends with Vlad TV? Vlad? I said, you know, we are, you know I don't toss that word around lightly. Uh, friend me, I have very specific definitions of what define and make and break a friendship. So are we friends? No, but we're friendly like. Uh, and she simply said to me, and not like she needed to tell me this, but you know, when it comes from your mother, you tend to straighten up a little bit. And she goes, you know, in interviews, they can make or break your career uh, depending on the questions and how they're asked. And if they're gotcha questions to set you up, and I say, yeah. She goes, so I'm asking you again. Are you friends with Vlad? Because I've seen some of the interviews. So just, you know, be mindful. And it made me go, hmm, maybe I either have to be really thoughtful about how I answer things or don't do interviews. Um, because, again, my first attempt is to always be comedic. Uh, so even like. I remember Vlad was asking me about that video that was floating around and I think it was trending or it was really hot about the, the, the step, not the stepdad, but the mother with the several baby daddies. And um, he brought his son McDonald's, but didn't bring the rest of the kids yeah. food. And we were talking about that. And he said to me, if you, would you just bring food for just your kid or would you, bring food for the other kids too. I said, oh, absolutely. I would bring kids for the other kids too because I might be trying to fuck the mother. So uh, I'm not going to let tartar sauce get in the way of me getting some tartar sauce. (laughs) A lot of people thought it was funny. Vlad cracked the fuck up. Uh, But, you know, I don't know. Maybe there are some people that would have heard or seen that answer and thought, thought ill of me. Because I said I want to fuck the mother. Um, 
I thought that was funny. And a lot of people had laugh emojis and thought it was funny. And repeated, I ain't going to let tartar sauce get in the way of me getting some tartar sauce. Another, you know, another, we also ended up talking about Bill Cosby. And I said something about and comparing what Bill Cosby did to eating pudding. You know, sometimes you just got to force your spoon in. And once you get it in the pudding, you go to work. And Vlad lost. He was choking, fighting through laughter. And again, a lot of people thought that was hilarious. But I don't know. Again, I, we live in an age where anything you say can be dissected. Yeah, but, but you tend to lead. You do lead first with comedy. Yeah. And that, that, that. <laughs> If they know, the, the, I guess, I guess this is the way that with the way people are going after people on social media, they're looking for sound bites to go after. Right. So it, it has nothing to do with you or that you lead with comedy. It has to do with this sounds inappropriate. I can make it inappropriate. I can virtual single and tell everybody that I'm, because this is the problem with our society to me right now. It isn't about us getting better. That was the goal was to make us better. Right. It isn't about us making better. It's that that guy is worse than everybody else. He's worse than me. That person is the bad person. Take him down. Take him down. That's the bad person. (laughs) And if everybody else is the bad person and you're still left standing pointing at everyone, you're fine. Right. But everybody has a camera and everybody can point at you and everybody, you're going to do something that you're not proud. Everybody is going to do things. We all make mistakes, but these it's, it's not about getting better. It's about that I am better than you and I'm going to make sure everybody knows it. And this is what it is. And this is what social media is doing. We are living. It's, it's almost codependent where we live in other people's problems and we have to point out that they're bad, which doesn't make you good. But somehow in this, uh, this world that we're living in now, it does make you good because you pointed out the bad stuff. Mm. It's not good. It was not going to work. Are we, are we, are we 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 there? Let's uh, get, let me give out these dates. Dates. Uh, sorry. Got a message from Tara. She's already in. Uh, Tara's already in London. So here, here we go. Uh, dates again. Uh, you probably listened to this if you got it when it came out fresh on the 13th. So it will be uh, October 21st to the 22nd at the Funny Bone in Richmond, Virginia. Aries will. I won't be. I'll still be in London. Uh, but I'm back October 28th through the 30th. Aries and I will be at the Ontario, Im- uh, sorry, Orlando Improv in Florida. That's the 28th through the 30th of October. November 10th through the 13th, we're going to be at Chuckles in Tennessee, and where Aries is actually going to go to Stax Records. We're going to go to. Am I doing that? We're doing that, right? Yeah. We're going to go to Stax Records. Right. We're going to go see uh, Elvis's uh, palatial small church house. Okay. Uh, that you said we we're going to do this. Show. Yes. We're going to get it on the podcast. Yes. We're going to go do, I'm, I'm taking Aries to do some white people shit. <laughs> and uh, then November 18th to the 20th, uh, we'll be at the uh, Tampa Improv. A life is full. <laughs> Keep going for the whole way. I November 25th to the 27th. And everybody Aries is going to be at the Helium in Indianapolis. Life. And I am going That's to be... Fine. In Tempe Improv in Skinny. Phoenix. I don't well, know Tempe, actually, uh, to go see, uh, so I can see my kids and have Thanksgiving. December uh, 1st through the 4th. Uh, oh, so we got to win this race. Ontario win Improv. Win race. Uh, you know, that's with uh, the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Uh, December uh, 1st to the 4th, Improv, uh, Ontario, California. December 29th through 31st, our big, big celebration for the new year of 2020. Baltimore. With Magoobies and Merlin. Merlin. Here we go, guys. Minus the mice. <laughs> Are we going to go? Hell no. You'll never go back. I will never go back to that motherfucker. Ever. Ever. But you'll go eat a loose chicken, a loose hot chicken. A roach is not a mouse. Now, imagine if Lou did that shit. Yeah, you know, I got all the bad chicken. I got some new. <laughs> yeah, so I got the collard greens. The nigga put a whole mouse in his mouth. <laughs> all right. Then I'd be done fucking with Luz. 
It was one roach on the wall. So we got to find another chicken place, man. Hit us up if you're in Maryland. Tell us a different chicken. No, that's not in Baltimore. Oh, no, that's not Memphis. Baltimore. That's Memphis. Sorry, that's Memphis. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you're in Memphis, tell us another chicken place. Uh, you know, when you go to Elvis's house, they should s- s- automatically serve you banana sandwiches. Peanut butter and banana fried peanut sandwich. Butter, fried, fried sandwiches. Fried peanut butter banana sandwich. Bro, that's pretty good. I fry peanut butter banana sandwich. I love fried peanut butter and banana sandwich, especially when it's cooked by my big black titted maid because she puts a little of her nigga juice in the peanut butter. She just squeezes her titty and black and brown sweat drip into the peanut butter. Black nigga peanut butter sandwich. I don't know. I wish I could do Elvis. I would murder that joke. All right. Big cool the poet. <laughs> like again, oh, the attempt is to be comedic. Sometimes you miss. By the way, for anybody who saw, if you're watching this on on YouTube, and I'm wearing my fuck Hartford shirt, it's yeah. it's from it's from Dave Chappelle. Right. So it's not like I I have a problem with Hartford. That's one. Just remember something, folks. Uh, everybody doesn't always score, and and whatever you do in life, as long as you win more than you lose, you're winning. Michael Jordan didn't win every game, but he's got six championships. Ali didn't win every fight, but he's a three-time world heavyweight champion. You understand? How, how, how what was what was uh that's the great quote from uh Jordan that I I'm what? I took how many game winning shots, but I only Oh made. I've been asked to take the game winning shot, blah, 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 and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. I, I actually love that. I, oh, dude. And the, the slow motion with the long coat. Yeah, man. That's, come on, man. That's Jordan. That's, that's the essence of cool, that commercial. <laughs> Oof. Um, Big Cool the Poet. It's called In My Zone. Instagram at Cool the Poet. C-O-O-L-D-A-P-O-E-T. Twitter at Cool the Poet. Same thing. C O O L. D A P O E T. SoundCloud, same thing. Cool the Poet. Spotify, same thing. C O O L D A P O E T. Contact cool the poet at gmail.com. Dot com. Cool the poet. Hey. That's all I got with Jeff Goldblum. I got pieces. Of people. Why? Uh, you got pieces of people? Dahmer. You're like a Dahmer. Yeah. Like Dahmer. Like you're, you're the I'm Dahmer of impressions. Dahmer of impressions. <laughs> Here's a little bit of Chuck Goldblum. Here's, what's his name? Christopher Watkin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, smooth. <laughs> Herbie Key <Kito. laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.